There's the light. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I am Lady Dame Figueroa Aziti, and I am so excited to be here with all of you today. I don't know where you're tuning in from, but wherever you're tuning in from, hey, um, I hope you are having a beautiful day. And so when I was asked to do a wellness video, I thought to myself, what am I do? What am I do? What am I do? Um, <laughs> and I like, you know, I called my brother, Jay Mace the uh, third. You probably already saw his video. It's already a part of the series. Um, and I was like, oh, what am I going to do? He was like, oh, do some kind of writing exercise. And, and I was like, oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Um, and then I also thought about, right, moments of my life that felt very comforting to me. Um, and one of those moments in my life was when my mom would read me stories. Yeah. And so I thought to myself, my wellness video is going to be me reading a story. And not just reading a story, but a story that I actually adapted. This story is in my book for black trans girls i don't know if i can say the whole title up on this video honey but if you go to my website you'll see the whole title <laughs> and i believe that this book came out in uh 2016. it of course is inspired by it is a literary daughter to um it is in conversation with the amazing um work by the goddess of the choreo poem and Tazaki shange's uh uh for color girls and um yeah so a choreo poem obviously it means that you could take this book as a book of poetry that you read um and you can also stage it so you can actually make a play out of it um which is pretty awesome and doo -doo 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 -doo, the story today that i'm going to be reading for you is um well, the piece that I'm going to read for you, which is a story and a poem, both things can happen. It is based off of the old Sumerian myth called Anana's Descent. If you're not familiar with this story, I'm not going to give you any details because you're probably going to hear some of them. But um, one of the things that happens in this story is that the god Inki actually creates um, what we now know as trans and gender non-conforming um, and intersex peoples um, within this story, um, within the Sumerian community. <clears throat> and so it has always been one of my absolute favorite stories. And yes, and so I thought to myself, you know, what is comforting, right? Like what is comforting for me? And I don't know if that's comforting for y'all, but that's what my video gonna do today. We gonna read this story, all right? <laughs> and hopefully it can be. So, um, especially for, you know, any, you know, trans folks out there, any intersex folks out there, any gender non-conforming folks out there, please know that you have an amazing sacred place in the history of the world. So, let's get to it. <laughs> oh, I gotta find it first. All right, here we go. So, if you have your books open, if you already own the book and you're watching this video, go on turn in your hymnals. That's what they say in church. <laughs> go on turn on your hymnals uh, to page 33. And this piece finds itself in a section called Mythos. A play in one act. The prologue. In the beginning. In the beginning, there was no gender. There were no pronouns. There only was the great spirit. Goddess, God, the universe, birth, awareness, and it was good. Good. Divine eye opened. Divine being could foresee limbs that were not limbs begin to dance and all that was, was, and all that is, is. Now, time tells all tales and shifts from one awareness to the next and the music of the one became the symphony of many. And as world formed and stars became the mothers of planets, we sprang our hips, our lips slip 
and to the mouth of being become daughter change. In those first days, we came to wake, came to make a short do. The mothers of creation were we. The fathers, beloved of mother, the mothers, beloved of themselves, held us high in heaven's esteem. The world gleamed, the one, when we walked into being, how beautiful, how wonderful, how true. World, now, heed this warning, give us our due, give us our due, give us our due. Act one, a black trans girl saves the world. <laughs> Back in Sumer, in olden days, there was a goddess who owned everything. Anana was her name, queen of heaven. They say she grew bold and realized she ain't on death. Beautiful and buxom, Miss Anana gathered her seven emblems, marched her behind to the gates of the underworld, looked back and said to her sister girl, her best friend, Diva, I'm about to go down to this here, get these underworld powers for my big sister real quick. If a girl don't come back in three days, go on to my three daddies and say what they got to say. Her sister girl proclaimed, gotcha sis. So, big mama Anana got to the first gate and they were like, girl, them pumps is cute, but they gotta go. To the second gate, to the third, to the fourth, until the seventh, she was stripped of her royal emblems until she gets to her big sister, who sat mourning her love, one of the bulls of heaven, which means, well, you know. Hey sis, I come to mourn with you, Anana say. Her big sis replied, lies. You think you're gonna come here and return? Today, little sis, you're gonna learn. So her big sis, Arishtagal, fastened the eye of death onto Anana. And she fell dead, child, dead. When she ain't returned, the world began to mourn. No, not just mourn, die. Why? Cause Anana is the goddess of everything. Without her, nothing can happen. <laughs> Sister girl go to several gods. The first two said no. They berated Anana for her desire to resurrect. They berated her, calling her arrogant. Then, sister girl Ninshubu, that's her name, Ninshubu, <laughs> go to Inki, god of sweet water, god of soft water, god of many waters, round world, on her knee she begged. Oh, father, the world is dying. With Anana not here, we must save her. Please, dad. And Enki heard a voice sing from before time and from his watery nail, take out the earth beneath. Black trans girls, beyond gender, beyond compare, beautiful. The stars with their hair, moon gleamed in their eyes, their skin was black, like the first night from which they came. Nature adorned their bodies, their tongue was universal flame. And first, black trans girls, armed with food and water of life, took wing to air. Down in the underworld, they flew with speed. Between the cracks of death, they could and did, went to goddess to set free. They reached big sister Rishtagal and found her mourning. And then without warning, repeated her chant, oh, my tearing at her hair. Oh, my eyes. Weeping from her eyes. Oh, my limbs. Holding her close. Oh, my sorrow. Hearing the echoed lamentations, Rishtagal woke. You there. Yeah, you. Thank you for your compassion. What shall I give? Give anything. 
If you don't know, Aristogal was tricked into becoming the goddess of the underworld. Her story was pretty sad. Mm. I want that there, black trans girls say. Aristogal. Why, it's nothing anyway. I want that there, black trans women repeat. Why, it's nothing. I could offer you riches, influence, a feast. Give me that body hanging on the nail. Give me that body. You are God, which means you cannot lie. And Aristogal did, because she was a god of her word. And black trans girls food place food of life to lip, water of life on tongue, and Inanna return. And together, through the cracks of the underworld they went, Anana gathering her emblems, shimmering, more powerful still. Now the eye of death was one of her gifts. Of course, more happened with she, one of our four patron goddess mothers. Four? It does not say four, it says, it says one of our patron goddess mothers. <laughs> for there are many. But that portion of the story is for another day. But later on, when black trans girls were being mistreated, Anana beat back their attacker and she say, come to my temple. I make you high in the eyes of mind. You shall hold sacred vocation. Come now. Come always, come then, come in. And that's the tale of how a black trans, how black trans girls saved the world. With goddess restored, all things went back to proper order. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. So I hope that you enjoy that reading. Listen. One thing I think that perhaps you could do after this video is imagine a story, right? Maybe one of your favorite fables, maybe um, a story that you've heard somewhere and, um, and ask yourself, who do you want to be in that story? Who are you in that story? Um, and then maybe write that story down and then read it. And for all of my black trans, gender non-conforming and intersex peoples out there, remember you are sacred and you are divine and that there are countless stories of us throughout history in sacred text and rituals and in religious texts that honor and uplift us and care for us and that you are more than deserving of joy, of happiness, of love, of affirmation. So thank you everybody for spending some time with me. I hope this story was able to pour something, something sweet into your day today. All right, everyone, have an affirming day. Take care.